Hey guys, what's happening? So we're back with more in the new Thanos series, which on the surface seems like him and Mistress Death going back and forth once again with their relationship issues, which I mean, we'll talk about some of that. But in the bigger picture, we're low key facing what could be the beginning of the end. So let's talk about it. And if you're enjoying these videos, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and don't forget to hit that bell up top to get all notifications so we can squad up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so coming right back from the reveal of Roberta Marshall actually being Mistress Death, we continue from the Grand Theft Thanos cliffhanger that we were left with after issue two, with Thanos taking Roberta in his stolen truck to get her away from the Illuminati so that he could have some time to talk to her. And so to have this sit down, Thanos ends up taking her to a Mexican restaurant, which is a rather wild selection. And I can't help but to think that she'd rather come here with somebody else to try out their chimichangas. But as it stands right now, Roberta Marshall has no memory of being Mistress Death, so she's quite overwhelmed at this whole situation, which is why when the waiter, Greg, comes to take their order, Roberta just asks for a whole bottle of tequila. And at first, Greg starts to tell her that they don't really do that. And then Thanos barks at him, so he's like, you know what? We'll make an exception. And it's here where Thanos tells her he was drowning in eternal darkness, trapped in eternal pain. And eventually it came to the point where he wished for death, an ultimate end to his agony, which for a moment he saw as weak until he realized the death that he was wishing for wasn't his own, but instead it was more of him longing for her, for Mistress Death, because in that moment his endless love and devotion were rekindled. Because now this is us making a full turnaround, a complete 180 from what we saw in Thanos wins. When at the time, after Thanos emerged from the God Quarry, he told Mistress Death that he no longer needs or even wants her love. And I was really glad to see this when it happened. Because this came off of the heels of Mistress Death orchestrating this whole fiasco so that Thanos had to jump through a bunch of hoops to prove himself worthy of her love. Which, come on man, it was ridiculous. But not only did Thanos pass these tests with flying colors, but he also went on to destroy this alternate future that was being ruled by a version of himself who had already defeated everyone, who was also obsessed with Mistress Death. And if you guys remember, this future was erased when the younger Thanos was like, hey, I will never become that guy. And then fast forward to this story, he's that guy again. So he tells her things like how fate has brought him back to this and how it's their shared and sacred destiny, which is part of his genuine explanation. But as we continue, it starts to feel more like a plot device that in a strange way makes me forgive the whole thing. And you'll see what I mean in just a few minutes, because as Thanos is just going on about his love and devotion to Mistress Death, Roberta tells him to stop calling her Mistress, only for Thanos to keep going which then just causes this huge outburst from Roberta that she doesn't fully understand, but she's able to use it as a brief distraction so she can hop in the stolen Thanos truck and make a break for it. And as soon as Roberta leaves, Christine Collins shows up. So Thanos demands that she tells him what happened to Mistress Death and why she's hiding here in a human form, which is something that we'll get back to in a little bit. But first, as we see Roberta speeding away while looking in her rearview mirror, which is definitely not a safe way to be driving, First of all, let's make that clear. It's here where the Illuminati catch up with her. And through the course of this, we're told that they'd pretty much tracked her down by way of Tony Stark tracing the pre-catalytic converter signature, which I imagine wasn't difficult for him to do. Cause for him, it's just like, hey, follow that beat up truck that didn't pass emissions. Or better yet, didn't need emissions cause it's clearly over 25 years old. But this wild chase with the Illuminati going after Roberta, trying to get her to pull over, it's abruptly ended as soon as she looks up and sees Thanos who she just runs right into full speed. So quickly, the Illuminati rush to her aid, Iron Man rips off the door, he checks her vitals, and the whole time Thanos is like, just let her die, cause he's ready for her to be free from this illusion. And for a moment, Emma tries to stop the bleeding, only for Tony to let her know that it's an aortic laceration, so it's pretty much a wrap for her. But upon her death, this ends up releasing Mistress Death, who initially is very upset at everyone here because the first thing she says is you corrupt death, you betray death, all of you. And it quickly turns into this two-sided argument where on one side, the Illuminati is like, we gave you what you wanted, a human life, a human death. Where on the other hand, Thanos is like, they weakened you. 
only for Mistress Death to tell him this is what she asked for. And it all starts to come together here because for one, Thanos tells her that he already knows, which in his case is because Christine already told him. So now as he confronts Mistress Death about what he learned from Christine, this now takes us into the flashback that explains to us how Mistress Death took on the identity of Roberta Marshall. And with seeing this, it's important to know that this flashback takes place after what we talked about when we covered Thanos issue one. Because even though it wasn't confirmed that Roberta was Mistress Death at the time, I had a feeling it was going to be necessary for us to talk about Mistress Death quitting and Marlo Chandler taking her place. And I won't go back through all of that here since we already covered it, but I have a link in the description in case anyone needs to go back and get caught up. Because that story sets the tone for this flashback to make sense. But if by any chance you guys want me to go back and do a video that fleshes it out a bit more, let me know in the comments and we'll circle back around to it. But at this point in the realm of death, Christine Collins made her way here to find death just to tell her in person that she goofed up because Christine believed that her daughter Marie was gone too soon, which she knew from the moment she saw death in the hospital room. And as we're told, Christine went through a lot to get here and a lot of people thought she was crazy for even trying, but she knew what she saw. And after searching for help and talking to a number of people, some who were actually crazy, Christine eventually got her answer from Marlo, who again is the stand-in representative of death at the moment. But it's crazy to see because this just shows how much Christine loved her daughter Marie for her to go through all of this just to get her back. But even after hearing all of this, Mistress Death says no, and she refuses to bring Marie back while saying that she's too insignificant to upset the balance in any way. And really, it's one of those things that sounds cold on the surface, but it just goes back to what we talked about before and the whole idea of if nothing dies, then eventually the main Marvel Universe will become the next Cancerverse. And again, it's not about Death being cold, but she's just doing her job. And for Death, this whole encounter with Christine it's caused her to want to understand much of these things that Christine is talking about because before she sent her away, Christine tells her that she was willing to beg for Marie's life, but after meeting Mistress Death, she only feels sorry for her. Which from here, this was enough to cause Mistress Death to go and seek out the Illuminati and strike a deal with them so she could try living a normal life and eventually understand all of these things about mortals that she's never experienced. Because keep in mind, just prior to this, there was a whole thing where Death became ill since so many people were returning from the dead, which later ended with Death being saved by Valkyrie. And this played a role in Death wanting to step down from her position. So after speaking to Christine and coming up with this idea where she wants to be mortal for a time, when Death went to the Illuminati, one of the first things they said was, why did you come to us? You could have done this yourself. And Death told them doing so would upset the larger balance and raise the suspicions of my siblings. And as far as her siblings, she's referring to infinity and eternity, oblivion, life, and galactus. But much like we saw in Al Ewing's Jane Foster series, her judgment and or punishment would have came from the Living Tribunal, or more specifically the death of death, who in the worst case scenario would be the one sent by the Living Tribunal to take her out. So with her going to the Illuminati, she was just really trying to do this low key, and there really wasn't a lot of pushback from them. They just wanted to make sure when they did this for her, they got something in return. So she obliged, letting them know that the extinction of their world would come sooner than they think. So in exchange for the knowledge on how to stop this, which she has locked away in her realm, she requested that they give her a human life and a human death. And after her secret and private quest was done, the information is all theirs. So when the time comes, her Infinity Well will call out to them and give them the information they need to know. But mind you, this whole flashback, it's being narrated by Thanos, with him going off of what Christine told him, to where from there he just filled in the rest of the information by way of context clues. So he knows after that Mistress Death requested to look like Marie and to be sent to Fresno, which is what brings everything back to where we are now. And it's here where Tony, he more or less confirms that all of this is right. Cause he just tells Mistress Death like, hey, okay, well we kept up our end of the bargain. So now you gotta tell us how our world ends. But Thanos just steps in more or less like, see, this is what I was talking about. The Illuminati's using you and they reduced you. So Thanos tells her, I love you for who you are, not what you've become. Wake up my mistress. And it's right here where Mistress Death lets Thanos know that he doesn't get it. Cause she tells him, I am not your mistress. I never will be. You have disturbed and disgraced what I sought to understand. And for that, I will never forgive you because she never really got to truly finish her secret quest since it was cut so short. But to me, I kind of think that's a lesson in itself because Roberta Marie was gone too soon as well. So now Mistress Death knows how that feels 
But right here, Thanos is just like, I'm disappointed. So he turns to Christine Collins and he kills her. So Death loses it. And she tells Thanos that mortal had more courage than you ever did in all your days, pitifully groveling at my feet. You will die here, Thanos, on this day by my hand, which now sets us up for Thanos versus Mistress Death, which in a lot of ways feels like the beginning of the end in of itself. Cause I got a feeling that some plot devices are being used here in order to bring back a lot of the Thanos story threads that have been sitting up on the shelf for some time but we'll have to wait and see. And so now real quick, I'm gonna give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all of your support. And for anyone who's new here, who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below where you can go to patreon.com slash dope spill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and we'll do it again on the next one. All right. Later.